Hi everyone, welcome to K-Sports Sunday. I'm Ryan and tonight I'll be joined in studio by Max and Adam. It's the last day of the baseball season and the fourth weekend of the NFL. The Ryder Cup needs another day and the opening of the NBA season is less than a month away. This could be the best time of the year in sports. We start with the Patriots who didn't play today but will tomorrow night in the Miami against the Dolphins. Let's get the conversation started with that one. Guys, how do you see the game going? You know, I see the Patriots coming on top and hopefully in a pretty impressive win. They need this win. They lost against the Jets. They beat the Bills in a pretty not impressive game last week. But they need this win to bring themselves to 2-1 and one in the division, to beat one of the three teams that really seems like they could take the division. And it would just really be a confidence builder, especially for their defense if they come out in the right way. Yeah, I agree completely. Like the defense really needs to build up and really needs to get going. But uh, if they can really pull that off, then this game is definitely going to be a big win for them. Yep. Adam, what about you? Uh, I I would like for the Patriots to win because it would be so much more, you know, like you said, it would build so much confidence in the defense that's doubted by so many. But with the Patriots this year, we've seen the, they lost to the Jets and the Bills. They're not a team that's as strong as the Patriots, or at least they shouldn't be, and we only managed to squeak past them. So I think that, realistically, I think that the Miami Dolphins will come out with this one. You know, I see where you're coming from, but I think that, you know, Belichick's played Miami so many times. He's played them in the last couple of years where they put in that wildcat system with Ronnie Brown and Ricky Williams. I think that, in the end, the Patriots know what to do, and although they barely beat Buffalo, they still got the job done. A W is a W. You take away a little bit of special teams, and Buffalo only scores 23 points. You know, the whole entire game was kind of a sloppy game. Patriots felt like they had it, didn't really have to play 100%. I think that if they come out as strong as they can and as strong as I think they will against Miami tomorrow, they'll be able to take home the win. Yeah, because if you really think about it, like back at the Bills last week, that they really they had defense, but it wasn't really what they needed. They should not have let all those points been scored, and their offense wasn't the problem. Is very clearly their defense and. They really need to pull that together this week. But if they do, it's, I don't think it's going to be a sl like a complete win, like a slaughter, but I believe that the Patriots are going to beat the Miami, but just by a little bit. Yep. So um, let's head off to the uh, video review on the Celtics. Hi, I'm Adam Magaletta for YBA Sports. Earlier this week, the Boston Celtics hosted the media for their annual kickoff to their season. YBA's Max Kleiman was just lucky enough to be at media day, but he's not here now, so I'm going to team up with him on this story. He stands 7 feet 1 inches tall and weighs 370 pounds. He wears a size 22 sneaker and only needs one name, Shaq. The future Hall of Famer looks pretty good in the Celtics uniform. The 37-year-old center already has four championship rings and is looking for one for the thumb with the NBA's most storied franchise, the Boston Celtics. That fifth ring for Shaq would mean the 18th NBA championship for the Celtics, who were within six minutes of that in Game 7 of the Finals last year against the Lakers. The Celtics recognized that in the offseason, they had to get better bigs. One of the reasons the Celtics lost that Game 7 was the injury to Kendrick Perkins. The Celtics' starter remains on the sidelines, at least for the start of the season. Off season, they had to get better bigs. Yeah, Shaq is definitely a physical presence, and, uh, <clears throat> and Jermaine, and then, you know, at some point we'll get Perk back, but I think that we, we have great size up front. You know, Glenn Davis is getting better all the time. He, he was, again, very, very good last year in the playoffs. And uh, when he gets an opportunity to play minutes, he plays well. So I think that we have four centers that with experience and then a kid, Semi Erden, a, a fifth center, a fifth seven-footer that, um, you know, had a very good summer. So we have a great deal of depth at that big position. I'm Max Kleiman for YBA Sports here at the Celtics training facility. I had a great time talking to lots of the players and coaches today, and what I learned was the Celtics are focusing a lot this year on one of their troubles last year, which was rebounding. I know I can. I think I'm, I think I'm 12 in rebounding in the history of the game, so you know, I know how to rebound. So, you know, like, like I've been saying, uh, you know, this whole time, you know, whatever Doc needs me to do, whatever the team needs me to do, that's what I'm gonna do. I gotta go in there and rough people up. That's, that's what I gotta do. And do you think that Shaquille or Jermaine O'Neal will be able to step in and help with those rebounding problems? 
I think that they will because you have a much bigger team. But I think where Shaquille O'Neal is going to bring a lot more to this team is the way the Celtics run their offense. They can go inside a lot more now. They can have a post presence, get other teams in foul trouble, little things like that that add up over the course of 82 games. And the Celtics haven't had a big physical presence on the inside. Forget rebounding. They haven't had one on the inside in years. Do you think that they're enough to bring you over the rebounding woes you had for a big part of last year? I think so. I think uh, us being a weak uh, rebounding team as a unit, I think with these two guys, uh, they're definitely going to make us a stronger rebounding team, uh, not at the bottom of the league like we were last year. Your re when you come back, do you expect to be given the starting position, or do you think you have to work your way back into the starting lineup? To say you so young, you ask that question with a lot of confidence. Huh? <laughs> well, I really don't want to answer this question because I don't want to start nothing, but really my spot not up for grabs. So when I come back, I will be in my spot, and then everybody else just got to adjust to, to me after that. Hi, welcome back to K Sports Sunday. I'm here with Max and Adam in the studio. So let's talk about the Celtics, guys. How do you think they're going to be this year? Well, you know, they were this close, and I literally mean it that close to winning the title last year. So I don't really see a reason why they can't repeat their whole entire quest to the championship. They added great veterans in Jermaine O'Neal and Shaq to fill in for the injured Perkins for the first couple weeks. Then you added old-time Celtics, I don't know if you can say great or player, Delonte West. A lot of mixed feelings about him. But when you put it all together, the Celtics team, game one, they're going to be starting four Hall of Famers, four future Hall of Famers. And then Rajon Rondo is one of the best point guards in the game, one of the best young players. You put all that together, yeah, the Miami Heat, they're a great team. I, I really don't see why the Celtics can't contend with them. Everyone's talking about the Heat jumping on that bandwagon. But in the yeah. end, the Celtics are just as strong a team. They still have all that star potential in their starting lineup. They have a deeper bench, in my opinion, than Miami. And it, I don't know, it's going to be a great season. Yeah, also you got to think about it. Kevin Garnett is not injured this year. Like recently he says, I'm going to have no knee problems this year. It's going to be great, and, you know, I'm going to be good this season. So, And when you think about it, in the past three years where we've had the big three, or yeah. now even the big four, in 2008, everyone's healthy. We win a championship. Yeah. 2009, Celtics. Exactly, you know, yeah. You have Kevin Garnett on the injury, and everything goes bad for the Celtics. And then in 2010, you get to the point, Celtics are right there, about to win it and Kendrick Perkins gets injured. So it seems like when this team's healthy, they're pretty much unstoppable. They take down teams who are supposed to be better than them. They pull off the upsets in the playoffs, and they really, with all the veterans, does, doesn't look like anyone can stop them. Yeah, they really have the energy pumping. How do you guys feel about Shaquille O'Neal joining the team? Do you think it's like a, you know, not good for them, or you think it's going to be helpful, or you think it's going to affect the game at all? Uh, I think that it's going to be great for them because the one reason that they did lose in Game 7 was because of the rebounding. And Shaq, with being that big presence underneath, is really going to help them with that. And I agree. I think that Shaq almost fills in the spot that Rasheed Wallace had last year. As a veteran player, he's going to speak his mind. He's not going to stand back. He's going to want playing time. And when he's on the court, he's going to play his best. And we all know that Shaq is capable of doing amazing things on the court. And you know what? He's put in a system now that has other veterans and has other people that can help Shaq perform well. He's not going to be double teamed or anything like that like he was back in the day, because you have so many other threats on the court. I think Shaq will fit in easily. I think him and Jermaine O'Neal will play a nice rotation at the, four, at the center spot until Perkins come back. And when Perkins comes back, you're just going to have so many players that all can legitimately be options when they're on the court. Exactly. But like, a lot of talk is going on now about how Shaq has gotten really old and his game is starting to drop and he's not really playing to his full potential. Do you guys agree or disagree with that? Um, I think, you know, with age, you don't... When you age, you obviously you, you lose some of your strength, you lose some of your speed, but I don't think it's affected him to the point where he's not good anymore. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. All right, so um, do you think that, uh, you guys see that video this week about the Celtics about Robinson wearing uh, Shaq's shoes? I, I uh, <laughs> really got a kick out of that one because uh, it's just, you know, it's kind of cool how like they're so comfortable with each other in practice already that a month in, you know, like you see Robinson just walking around in Shaq's shoes, and they are huge on his feet. They are just way too big for him. And if you can imagine wearing those, it's like walking around in flippers. And besides the fact that it's just an extremely funny situation, you think about the team chemistry, and the Celtics in the past couple of years, they've been really big about team bonding mm -hmm. and getting to know each other and being friends, essentially, with every player on your team. Oh, yeah. And this is just another 
display of how the Celtics really can come together as a team, have fun in the process. And yeah, I really feel like it's like nice, a nice, nice warm welcome to any new member of the team, and they all just like to get along. It's not like a team that like oh, it's just win. It seems like they like to have a lot of fun and uh, enjoy their time on the team. Exactly. Yeah, and that really helps them getting down the stretch when you know every team loses their you know initial push down the season. You know everybody gets tired. You know when you have good team chemistry, it really really helps. Yeah, and this is just like a, what, like a month, like not even until you're like practicing, and they already are so comfortable that Nate Robinson takes Shaq's shoes and uh, they just tries to do sprints. Like, look at the trouble he's having. Those things are huge.